In previous videos, we've grabbed a JSON stream from the internet, parsed it, and we're inserting it into the database in a background thread in an async task. Now, the Android quality guidelines indicate that if there's going to be a delay, we should inform the user, and we should put the work in a separate thread, and we should allow the user to cancel that separate thread. So in this video, we're going to take a look at a progress bar, and a progress bar will allow us to show progress to the user. With the progress bar, we need to understand a little bit about the methods of the async task and some of the important methods that we have used and have not used as well. So we have on pre-execute. This runs on the UI thread, and this is used for setting things up before our, threads run, our thread runs. Do in background is the stuff we want to run in a separate thread. On progress update, that runs on the UI thread as well, and we invoke that by calling publish progress from do in background. And then on post execute runs in the UI thread, and that's an opportunity for us to finish up uh, any work that we need to finish up based on the do in background thread finishing. So in other words, on post execute allows us to glue together what we get from do in background with the UI because on post execute runs on the UI thread and it's called when do in background finishes. So what we're going to do in on pre execute is we're going to initialize our progress dialog. In do in background, we're going to call publish progress, which will invoke on progress update, and that will allow us to update our progress bar. And then in on post execute, we will dismiss the progress bar. So to start with, uh, I'm going to go to our GPS of plan screen and I'm going to declare an attribute. And we'll say private progress dialog. And we'll say plant progress dialog. And terminate with the semicolon. Uh, looks like I misspelled progress. There we go. A progress dialog. That'll work. Whoops. Okay, and save. I scroll down towards the bottom where I have my async task, and I'm going to override the method on pre execute. This is where we're going to do a lot of work to set up this progress dialog. You see, it auto completes for me, and so I will go ahead and accept Android Studio's default proposal. Now I will initialize the progress dialog by saying plant progress dialog equals new progress dialog. Now, it requires a context, so I'm going to say git application context, and I'll let uh, 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 Android Studio go ahead and finish that for me. Uh, pl uh, plant progress dialog, I'm going to say set cancelable true. So this means that we can cancel this activity if we wish. Uh, plant progress dialog, and I'm going to say set progress style. Okay, and we use a constant here, progress dialog. Dot style horizontal. Okay, so a horizontal bar basically to show the progress. Plant progress dialog, and then we'll say set progress. What's our initial progress? We're going to say zero. Now, what's our scale? Plant progress dialog, set max. 100. So we're giving ourselves a scale of 0 to 100. Plant progress dialog dot set message. Okay. And then here I'm going to say get string. That will get me a string from the uh, strings.xml. So hold this thought just a second. Allow me to go in and make a new string in strings.xml. I'm going to values and I'll simply make a new entry here. String name equals, uh, we'll say downloading plant names, and in English we'll say downloading plant names. Now I know I'm going to need a cancel button in a minute, so I'll go ahead and do that while I'm here. String name equals LBL cancel, and then close, and then, whoops, cancel just like so, and save. Okay. And now I go back to my GPS of plant, and uh, plant progress dialog set message, 
get string, and we're going to say r dot string dot down loading plant names, and you see it's already uh, created that string property for me. Okay, uh, plant progress bar dot show. I'm sorry, plant progress progress dialog dot show. And this makes it visible. This makes it appear. Okay, and then I'll move the super call down towards the bottom. I don't think that really matters, but we'll go ahead and move it down towards the bottom. There's one more thing I need to do. Of course, I need to add some comments, but in addition to that, set up our plant progress dialog. In addition to that, I also need to make a button. This is a little bit tricky because we have to uh, go old school here and use an inner class. So I'm going to say plant progress dialog dot set button. We'll say dialog interface. And then we're going to use the constant button negative. Okay. Comma. Say get string. Remember that cancel we had before, before that we just made r dot string dot lbl cancel. There we go. Okay. And finally, uh, we're going to say new dialog interface dot on click listener. Now this is where it gets a little bit goofy because uh, what we're doing is inside of this method call, we're declaring a new anonymous inner class, which is a kind of funny syntax. So we're declaring, we're, we're making an object out of a class that we're declaring right here. Uh, so we have to be extra careful with the syntax. So open curly and close curly. And in this, I'm going to say on click. Uh, let's see, public void on click dialog interface dialog int which open curly close curly and I'm simply going to say dialog dot dismiss okay and then terminate this entire construction with a semicolon so what we're doing in a, in a lot of very confusing syntax here is we're making essentially a cancel button that simply removes this dialog that's the you know that's the cliff notes version of what's going on here it's a little bit confusing but uh, that's essentially what's going on okay so i'm going to save and i'm going to go up to my on post execute and uh, we're going to dismiss our dialog box in the on post execute as well so i'm going to say plant progress dialog dot dismiss now remember what happens, the on post execute gets called after the thread has finished working. So in this case, it's naturally going to go away. So the dialog box appears before we start the thread because we've put the construction in the on pre execute. It's going to go away automatically after we finish the thread with this dismiss here, or it will go away if the user clicks cancel. It will automatically go away then. So just a few more things that we need to do to get this to work. First, we need to make an on progress update method. This will occur on the UI thread and will be called by the uh, background thread. And if you've ever wondered why we have this middle generic identifier, the integer, that is the value that is getting passed to our on progress update. So I'll scroll down and I'll say, this is within our inner class, but not within another method. I'll say on, whoops, on progress update. Okay, notice that it's accepting an integer, and there again, that's the integer that we see up in our generic list up above, and that's what's going to get passed from our background thread. So uh, what I'll do here then is after the super call, we'll say progress, uh, plant, progress dialog, dot set progress and value uh, values rather now I'm saying values with the zero and square brackets here because what's actually getting passed in is potentially an array of integers and we're saying okay uh, we just want one we just want to grab the first one 
Okay, now we have to do a little bit of math. What we're going to want to do is we want to decide how frequently to update this dialog. Now you see we're going to iterate over plants here and we're going to insert plants into the database. And that's actually the part that's going to take a little bit of time. We can do a progress update once we have downloaded the plants, that's fine. Um, and that would be probably this part right here. Uh, but then we also want to do an update as we're inserting each plant, as we're iterating over each plant. Now, we don't want to call that on progress update for every single plant, but maybe we want to do it for every dozen plants or every two dozen plants or something like that. And that's where this math is going to come in. So, uh, I'm going to make a new counter sol called int uh, plant counter equals zero. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is we have our for loop. And in the for loop, I'm going to say at the end of the for loop, I'm going to increment the plant counter. Okay. And okay, so that means we've looped one time. Now what I'll do is I'll say if plant counter modulo, and I'll explain that in just a moment. Okay. Uh, and now we need all plants. dot size, so the number the, the number of plants that we're iterating over, uh, and then I'm going to say divided by, uh, let's say 25, equal, equal, zero. Okay, then update progress. Holy smokes, that was hard to follow. Okay, if plant counter modulo, all plants size, divided by 25, and it looks like I probably should have a couple more. Uh, let's do let's do it like this. Let me change the parentheses uh, to look like this. Okay, so all plant size divided by 25. That means that we want to update the progress bar in 25 increments. So in other words, uh, we want to update it about 4% at a time. Okay, so by dividing all plants into 25 different compartments, uh, that essentially is saying, okay, we want to update it 25 times. Now the modulo operator is remainder. So we're saying if the plant counter divided by um, this kind of funny unit equals zero, then we want to update the progress. Uh, again, I know that's a little bit tricky, but basically at the end of the day, what we're saying is I want to update 25 different increments. And trust me on this, I worked this through several different ways uh, before I actually was satisfied with the progress, and this is what it should look like. Okay, so modulo, that means remainder of division, and what we're saying is modulo zero, it means plant counter happens to be on one of these even one out of 25 units. Don't know if that helped at all, but that's, that's what comes to mind. Okay, so I'm gonna say progress. Okay, publish progress, and I'm gonna say uh, plant counter times 100 divided by uh, all plants uh, dot size. Okay, so this is going to put together a fraction or basically a percentage complete. And after all of that math, we're in pretty good shape. Now we might want to do a little a couple of published progresses up above here as well. This is just indicating, uh, this one is just, uh, and I'll put a comment to this effect, but we'll say update the progress indicator uh, to show how much we have saved into the database. Now remember, because we're doing this divided by 25 in this modulo, we're basically going to be up. We're basically going to say 4%, 8%, 12%, 16%, and so on and so forth. So that first 4%, it's going to go from zero straight to four. Uh, so what we can do is we can put some small progress updates before we even get there, just to say, hey, I've at least gotten into the doing background thread. So I can say publish progress. And we'll just say one. So one percent complete at this point. We'll copy that. Um, okay. Now let's see. Uh, offline plant DAO, and then we're saying plant DAO fetch plants. Let's do a published progress of two right before we do the online fetch, and let's do a published progress of three after he, we have finished uh, reading and parsing that JSON. 
So we're going to go 0% uh, complete, 1% complete, 2% complete, 3% complete, and then down here, 4, 8, 12, 16, uh, 20, so on and so forth. Roughly about there, plus or minus 1 or 2%, roughly that's what we're looking at. So I'm going to save, and then I'm going to run this, and we will take a look and see how our progress update, uh, indicator looks. Just a moment. Now the emulator has started, and we'll let the app start. Now, as I deployed, I did notice one small problem that I had. Uh, for the progress dialog context, I had git application context, uh, but that won't work. I need to say gpsaplant.this, which is the enclosing class of this thread. If I have a moment, I'll go back and I'll fix the earlier part of the recording and replace it with the gpsaplant.this part here. So anyway, with that, I think we're in good shape. I'm going to tell the uh, my app is starting to come up. I'm going to tell the debugger to continue and run the app. So run and resume program and back to the uh, app here. Okay, and F9. Okay, now you see downloading plant names appears along with the cancel button. Now you see that once it has finished loading the plants, the dialog goes away. Now I'm only loading a few plants in this demonstration, but uh, we can go back and load quite a few more. In any case, I can st start typing in Circus, and unfortunately, uh, the text is a bit hard to read, but you, as you can see, it's brought up uh, 12 different red buds. I can pick on one, and it will be easier to see once I select it. Uh, you'll see it's, it fills in with Circus canadensis, Appalachian red, Appalachian red, red bud. Now to get a larger set of plants, I'm going to change it so that instead of only returning red buds, or in other words, getting red buds from our JSON service, uh, it's going to get anything. So I'm going to put in j the letter E, which will return quite a bit of data, and then I'm going to deploy this app one more time. Now the second time the app has been deployed, I'm going to go ahead and tell the debugger to continue to run and let the app load. So F9 to tell it to run through the breakpoints. And we should see this time that the downloading plant names is going to last a bit longer because instead of only 12 red buds, it actually now is downloading 3,000 plants and it's inserting those 3,000 plants into the database. So it's going to run. It, uh, in practice, I found the first time on the emulator, uh, the emulator runs a bit a bit more slowly than an actual device would run, so it can take a couple minutes. Nonetheless, you see the lag here. You see it is taking longer than it did last time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause and let it finish. And about 30 seconds after I said I'm going to let it pause, it came to the on post execute. This is the line where it's going to dismiss the dialog. So the dialog is now gone and you can see that the uh, screen is back and active once more. So in this video, we've taken a look at how to create a progress dialog and how to get it to show when, we're, when our application is working. We added a cancel button to it, and that's very important because when you have a long running process, you wanna give the user an opportunity to cancel out of it. So in our next video, we'll take a look at how to make that cancel button uh, actually cancel the activity. At this point, the cancel button will work uh, to dismiss the, the dialog box itself, but it won't actually dismiss the activity behind the scenes that's doing all the work. So we'll see you for that next video. Thank you.